Hey everyone, welcome back to A Guy Learning How to Draw, a podcast about me trying to teach myself how to draw um, and uh, helping you hopefully a little bit along the way. Uh, uh, thank you for everybody who has uh, been watching. It's been, uh, it's been surprising to see people downloading the podcast and I'm sorry that I'm not doing it more often. I'm going to try to make it a little bit more regular now and talk about uh, a few different things and get some ideas about a few new episodes coming up. Uh, right now, I'm probably spending the next uh, episode or two uh, doing um, a bit of a uh, pin-up piece, I call them. Not really pin-ups in the traditional sense, but more of a finished illustrated piece, finished illustrated pieces. The idea that is that I'm trying to develop my abilities and style and technique within singular finished illustrated pieces um, to then carry that ability and those or those abilities over into um, uh, sequential art in, uh, in a comic book page or story format. Those take a lot of time. Uh, I definitely started there because I really wanted to get to the telling the uh, telling the comic book story. Uh, but then the more I got into the artists that I really like, um, Frank Frazetta, uh, Mark Schultz, Frank Cho, uh, Al Williamson, you know, you start to see those pieces, um, those singular pieces. Uh, come together uh, really, really nicely, and you kind of like sing, you can put them up on your wall, you can frame them, I call them pinups. Uh, so this is a little one that I did um, quite a while ago, I don't remember when, I of course didn't uh, date it. In the back of my mind it was kind of inspired by uh, Frank Rosetta's um, Carson of Venus cover uh, that he did for, I think it was Ace Paperbacks back in the day. He actually did two of those, originally he did one where he had to kind of hand in the original, so he did a, a second one, which is a little better, and he probably got to keep that original. This is a, this this is Carson Venus. It's a woman with a sea monster. And a friend of mine said, "Why do you do something with a sea monster?" So uh, I was experimenting with that. Um, things I would do differently in in this. I mean, the composition is okay. It's starting to get there. The lines are converging interestingly. It's a little not as dynamic as it could be because, of course, the boat is in rocky seas, but the boat kind of looks level. Um, but of course, her body position is interesting, but her, her hips and her legs are a little awkward. So I think I would do something different there. Her nose is too big. Um, the, line, the line quality for me is the biggest problem I have with this one so far because of course my hatching's up there and stuff like that. But water's hard to do, so I was trying to do something interesting with that. Um, this one is kind of inspired by um, the Bernie Wrightson horror genre comic stuff. like. Tales from the Crypt and Creepy, Al Williamson, Frank Frazetta, guys like that have, have done, and you know, many others have done some amazing work in that. I love that that old black and white printed magazine format horror comics with zombies and and just beautiful line art um, where it really is at its purest and most fun form. So this was like a, a little pinup piece with a, a female zombie hunting character, um, maybe on a back lot, you know, sh you know hunting zombies in the middle of the night with a lantern. Uh, I had some friends and colleagues that were kind enough to give me some notes on this, and uh, I kind of decided, you know what, let's do it a second time, uh, and that gave me the ability to go in and and correct some of the mistakes and tighten up some of the ink work, uh, and and do another pass and learn some lessons within one uh, with within one piece. So you can definitely see the difference when having this horizontal. Um, uh, this horizontal, uh, simple layout in the first one, and then a more dynamic uh, layout in the second one. The, uh, the the pose is very similar, but I did I did adjust her upper torso. You get more cleavage. It's a little bit more fun. Um, I did a little bit. I paid a little bit more attention to the line widths in terms of where the light is coming from, uh, and, and making the lantern feel like it's more self lit. Uh, her hair is more interesting in this one. I was experimenting with ink washes, which is really hard, uh, even for the best of the best. Ink washing is, is a hard thing to do uh, and manipulate, so it, it's an experiment. These are all experiments. Uh, this one, uh, again, within this, this zombie hunting uh, story, again, every piece like this has to tell some sort of story, even if it is just one, um, one, one moment. Uh, this uh, this character is a bit of like an Indiana Jones type character uh, as a lady. I was I was trying to work on line weight and composition in this and spotting blacks. And some of the people who have, were kind enough to give me some notes on this, uh, people like Mark Schultz suggested you don't have to 
leave that little thin line around the outside when uh, a character is against something black. A lot of artists tend to do that, but you don't have to. You can actually, um, which if I you might know, try again in something like this, is, is not be afraid to bring the blacks right up against the edge of something. And, and if it's black hair, you can still have like a highlight in the hair to still give it an edge. Um, and, and that's a tighter look. I, I definitely agree. I could have done that here. Obviously, it, there's some other funky little things like this bump in her arm. Kind of, it's clothing, but it kind of looks like she has a, a growth in her arm. So I don't think I would do that again. Um, but it's it's starting to to utilize the, the spotted blacks to draw the attention to the to the point of focus by putting the darkest darks and the lightest lights in the uh, contrasting in the in the, the area of the frame that you want the viewer to look at or the, the person to look at. And before I go on to the piece that I'm, I'm going to start working on here, I want to talk a little bit about some books that I've been picking up. I've been picking up a lot of art books uh, and how-to books. This one in particular, I'm really enjoying, uh, Drawing Beautiful Women, the Frank Cho method. Frank Cho is one of my newly discovered favorite artists. I don't know why I'd ever found him before. Um, he definitely has a style uh, and a subject matter and a style that I really like and enjoy. Uh, this book is great layout uh, and the, or sort of like the way it works it, with these little notes. Um, around like uh, you know how mouths and eyes should be could, could, you know, not necessarily have to be but should be shaped or could be shaped to do his method and it really simplifies it and, and he talks about composition and he shows his process from rough pencils to more refined pencils to more finished pencils to the finished ink really nice um, how-to book uh, with a lot of great examples and this guy is amazing another one of my absolute favorite artists is uh, um, Mark Schultz, and Mark Schultz uh, is uh, is well known for for he has his uh, book called Zenozoic Tales he did back in the day, and he also is really well known for for a lot of book illustrations like Conan and stuff like that. Uh, his his line rendering and this this dry brush technique he's got is just stunning. His his composition and storytelling top notch, like some of the best. Um, and I was looking through some of these these new newly published. Um, smaller books. He's got uh, a much bigger one behind me here called The Portfolio. Amazing. Uh, published by Flesk. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, and I was looking at some of these pencil pieces and seeing these red lines uh, that, that are showing up within the composition. And I thought I knew what they were. So I asked him, I said, you know, what are the red lines for? And, and he confirmed my suspicion that they, they are compositional guides. The method that, that is widely known as the, the golden mean or the, the rule of thirds. And as a cinematographer, I experience the rule of thirds quite often. I mean, it's how you, you need to think about framing in general, or you, you should think of framing and good framing in general when compositing any type of, of image. And especially in the moving image, it, it is more abstract because you don't necessarily have the uh, option to sit there with rulers and lay out a frame on a viewfinder or looking through a camera viewfinder. So you have to look at that and, and imagine breaking the frame up into thirds. Thirds going horizontally and thirds going vertically. And Mar Mark has done that here with this red pencil underneath the pencil um, and taken it even further to divide the page not only in thirds, uh, uh, horizontally and vertically, but also on the diagonals from the center point and from the outside points, breaking it up into thirds in different shapes. And where those lines converge and cross over each other um, is a good place to, play, to, to place your point of focus and the most important elements of your story. And then using those same lines to draw the viewer's attention within the composition. So what I'd really love to do in this piece that I'm going to start now is use this method, borrow this method from, from Mark Schultz, who was kind enough to explain it to me, um, and, and confirm my suspicion that it is definitely what I use as well within cinematography, and apply it uh, to the page. Um, what I've been uh, playing with here is a little story element of like a, an Egyptian type queen, uh, sacri not sac maybe it's sacrificing, maybe she's punishing or you know, killing this guy. She's like slashing his throat on the steps of this like kind of Parthenon style columned Egyptian ancient ruins fantasy kind of thing. Not necessarily historically accurate here. Um, so I had started with this little rough sketch, but I found that it was um, maybe a little uh, uh, 
uh, too flat. It was, she's just standing straight. Like, I like the idea that she's being regal and standing and being this uh, uh, authoritative figure. So I felt that it wasn't very uh, dynamic. So uh, I was reading another how-to art book, which I'll probably review uh, down the road in another podcast, uh, and it was discussing the, the kind of that, that form or that layout that you get in, in the human form when it's standing or moving, and it's a nice kind of zigzag back and forth. So you have like the, the head down back to the neck, back to the chest, back through the thorax, out through the, the front of the stomach, back through the hips, back, and then out, uh, out with the thighs, and et cetera, et cetera. This nice kind of zigzag pattern. And I was, I was practicing uh, some of the lessons in the book and looking at this idea of that natural curve or, or zigzag within a dynamic uh, movement. So I decided to add a little bit of movement to the same scene that I was working on. Uh, so this uh, this is the start of it. I've started breaking down the this piece. I've laid out the, the square of where it's going to go and I've broken it into thirds just like uh, in, in the example I was looking at in Mark Schultz's book. So I can start practicing this compositional method. And I, I haven't necessarily placed them perfectly. I probably should have, have really focused on getting her head exactly there. But you know these are rules to be broken. They're kind of loose, they're just guidelines to help refine uh, something. So I'm going to uh, take a crack at this, um, probably f uh, refine it a little bit more in the blue line stage, and then tighten it up in the pencil, and uh, and then go to ink, which is which is sort of like a three-stage process. I know in the He-Man stuff that I was doing in the previous episode, I was just doing blue line right to, to ink. Um, here I'm going to probably go blue line to pencil to ink because it's, a, it's a, like a nice little intermediate for me right now, it's just something I've been playing with, to tighten things up without going crazy with pencil and really being able to practice where those line, those, those line uh, weights are going to be for the finished ink. And then I'll probably come back in the next episode when I'm about to go to ink and, um, and start talking about where I'm going to spot the blacks and how I'm going to um, further work out all of these little things that I'm trying to, to develop as I go. So here we go.